All Good evening. Money. Thank you for and coming at seven o'clock. And we have a lot of on our, from... lot on our agenda. So I'll call the April 27th, 2015 school board meeting to order. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> okay, um, as you know, we had elections, and at this time, I would like to call Anita, Kate, and Jeff around to the front, and we will do the oath of office. Then, at this time, I would ask Kate Mayer to do the roll call, please. Absolutely. Lisa Collins. Here. Gary Dunlap. Here. Cheryl Hancock. Here. Nita Jagosinski. Here. Tom Cruise. Here. Jeff Young. Here. Kate Mayer, I'm here. And Tim Menninger. Here. Thank you. Okay, with seven of the seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum. Um, approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. It was amended on the 24th um, to include a closed session. Um, are there any other changes to the agenda as published? Seeing none, then I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Okay, board organization, election of temporary chair. Our first official action of this evening is to appoint a temporary chair to conduct the board officer's election. I would entertain a motion to appoint a temporary chair for the board, of, board officer's election. Is there a motion? I would move that, um, Cheryl, you would be the chair. Okay, is there, are there any other, do I need to do seconds? I don't think I do by Robert's rules. Are there any other nominations for the temporary chair? Are there any other nominations for the temporary chair? Are there any other nominations for the temporary chair? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to close nominations and unanimously elect Cheryl Hancock for the temporary chair position. Is there a motion has been made and seconded, Anita? Okay, uh -huh. motion has been made and seconded to close nominations and elect Cheryl Hancock as the temporary chair. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Then, election of board okay. officers. Um, in this role, it says note that they need to be made and seconded, um, but it does not require a vote. Oh, that is kind of. Well, we've always done a vote in the past, so I think we'll just continue on as our past practice has. I think we have to do the motion to unanimously elect, so we'll just continue on with that. So are there any um, nominations for the Office of President? I will nominate Cheryl Hancock. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Are there any other nominations for the Office of President? Are there any other nominations for the Office of President? And are there any other nominations for the Office of President? Since there is only one nomination, I would entertain a motion to close nominations and cast a unanimous ballot for Cheryl Hancock for the position of President. So moved. 
Is there a second? Second. Um, okay, all those in favor? Is there any discussion? I'm sorry. <laughs> Seeing none. All those in favor of closing nominations and casting a unanimous ballot for Cheryl Hancock for president, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Vice President, are there any other nom are there any nominations for the office of Vice President? I would nominate Anita Jakosinski. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Since there's only one nomination, I would entertain a motion to close nominations and cast unanimous ballot for Anita Jagosinski for the position of Vice President. I would so move. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Anita, you have been elected as Vice don't President. Miss any meetings. Don't miss any meetings. <laughs> the next position is clerk. Are there any nominations for the office of clerk? I'd like to nominate Kate Mayer for clerk. Is there a second? Second. Okay, are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to close nominations and cast a unanimous ballot for Kate Mayer as clerk. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. <coughs> Congratulations, Kate. Thank you. Treasurer, are there any nominations for the office of treasurer? I nominate uh, Lisa. Lisa Collins. Lisa. Is there a second? I'll second. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to close nominations and cast a unanimous ballot for Lisa Collins for the position of treasurer. Motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded to close nominations and cast a unanimous ballot for Lisa Collins for the position of treasurer. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Congratulations, Lisa. Okay, then designation of official depositories. Julie Holman, I think, is presenting on this and maybe. Mr. Clark. I would be glad to be the fill in. Thank you. So each year as a part of the organizational meeting and per board policy, the board uh, designates both the official depository um, and the checking depository investment and checking depositories you have issue papers on uh, these two items we are not recommending a change to any of the institutions contained therein I'd be glad to answer any questions so are there any questions then I would entertain a motion to approve Merchants Bank LGIP Park Bank and Associated Trust Company as the district's investment depositories and continue checking services with Merchants Bank NA so moved. Anita, is there a second? Second. Um, okay, any discussion? Okay, seeing none, uh, all those in favor of designating Merchants Bank, LGIP, Park Bank, and Associated Trust Company as the district investment depositories, and to continue checking services with Merchants Bank, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. If the record could show that I abstained from votes on both those actions. Okay, thank you. I knew you were going to go there. Thank you, Mr. Menninger. Then designation of official newspaper, Dr. Carlson. We're recommending that the district designate uh, its continued relationship with the Onalaska Home and Courier Life as the designated newspaper. And again, you have an issue paper with that recommendation. Okay, are there any questions regarding that? Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to approve designating. The, I would entertain a motion to approve the 2015-2016 WIAA membership for the district activities. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Wisconsin Association of School Board School Boards membership. Again, the recommendation would be for the Board of Education to continue its affiliation with WASB 
And you'll do, you do note on the issue paper, we approximate the cost at about $8,000. This year, it was $7,905. And so um, based on that, we would be recommending for your continued membership in that association. Okay, any questions? Then I would entertain a motion to approve the district's 2015-2016 WASB membership as presented. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion or questions? Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Then, designation of WASB representative. Um, this year, I think, Lisa, you serve in that role, do you not? Mm -hmm. um, and so Lisa did go and represent the school district at the convention in January. I know that Kate is also on one of their um, resolution committees. So, um, I don't know if anyone wants to volunteer to serve in this role or if um, we just begin with nominations. I will just say it's a wonderful thing to do. Um, you listen to all the resolutions and uh, you vote on them for your district and it's a great honor to be in that assembly, Lisa. Absolutely. Right? I, uh, just to hear the discussion from the district, the different districts on, you know, how, how these policies kind of affect them and really having input into that so it was cool it was a cool a little overwhelming with the voting <laughs> things but yeah are you interested in it again lisa yes for the january yes to serve as the representative unless someone else wanted the opportunity to do it all right then i'll just start out um to get this going um i would nominate lisa to be our wasby appointee is there a second I second it. Okay. Um, I think this is just a regular motion. So I have a motion to appoint Lisa Collins as the WASB representative and the second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Designation of CESA 4 representative. And June 3rd, 2015 is the annual meeting that is the uh, primary responsibility is to uh, attend that meeting on behalf of the district. And I know you receive um, information about the CESA um, activities as well as the representative. And I don't have who the current rep. I am. I have been for okay. I think two or three Couple years, years. Okay. and I love doing it but unless if somebody else is interested that's okay with me too but is there anyone uh, else seeing no one then if someone would like to make a nomination <laughs> I would well, go ahead you I already nominated one I will person. make a motion to nominate Kate Mayer is there a second I'll second, second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded to appoint Kate Mayer as a CESA 4 representative. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <laughs> motion carries. Designation of school board meeting times and dates. Um, the, you did receive a copy of the calendar. I, I would note that our, I have to go to the position paper. Our meeting dates are usually the second and fourth Mondays of the month, and meeting times are at 7 p.m. Is there anything else, Dr. Carlson? I, I would just note this always happens on an annual basis typically, but there are a couple dates that I think the board has chosen just to make that decision later. Uh, but you'll note um, coming up uh, during our winter break, December 28th, that does fall on a day in which district offices are closed and it's a paid holiday for 12-month employees. And then also looking ahead to March 28th, that also falls on a- May? Or, no, March 28th, associated with our spring break, oh, yep. that there is a spring paid holiday on that Monday where offices are closed throughout the district. So those are, now what we did not do, we did not put on the following May. This is kind of from this organizational meeting to the next organizational meeting. So um, on, on your sheet here, that top May is this May coming up. And so you've already made that adjustment for Memorial Day in meeting on that Tuesday. Um, so anyway, just to be aware, but I think in the past, you as a board have just, as, as you get closer to those dates, made a decision on, on rescheduling or even holding 
that meeting at that time. So I'm not recommending that you make that decision tonight, but just to be aware of it. Okay, so the um, board meeting time uh, guest designation, if there is anyone interested to make a motion that we meet on the second and fourth Mondays of the month at seven o'clock p.m., I would entertain such a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded that we meet for our regular meetings on the second and fourth Mondays of the month at seven o'clock p.m. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. There we are. We're reorganized in less than a half an hour. That's good. Nor board norms reflection. I would note that the norms and re re norms um, are in your blue folder if you want to take a chance some time to take a look at those as we move through our meeting tonight that would be great so next item on the agenda is public participation is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time we ask that you come forward and um, state your name address and topic to be addressed anyone then under recognition and thank you, John Daly, 2015 School Facilities Manager of the Year. Mm. I think Dr. Carlson and Mr. Clark are going to take this. Good evening, Mr. Daly, come on up please. <laughs> well again, congratulations to our very own Mr. John Daly, who's being, who has been named the 2015 School Facilities Manager of the Year by the Wisconsin Association of School Business Officials. I'm going to have Mr. Clark talk a little bit more about the award. So the award is based on four award criteria, leadership in your schools, leadership in your profession, your own professional development, and then leadership in your school community. And uh, I'd remind you there are 400 plus school districts in the state of Wisconsin. Everybody has somebody managing their facilities. And of all those individuals across the state, John best exemplified this year what those individuals do for their school district. So that's not the top 10%, it's not the top 5%, it's not the top 1%. It's the top one quarter of a percent of all people in his profession. Um, so uh, very well deserved uh, by John. And Dr. Carlson will tell you a little bit more. So as part of the nomination process, here are a few statements from nomination papers submitted on John's behalf. As I reflect upon John's recent accomplishments, I am once again reminded just how lucky our community and school district is to have him. John contributes to our team's success it is never about his department or your department. He sees the school district and community as one family. So with this award, John will also receive $1,000. And that is sponsored by Stalker Sports Floors and SchoolDude.com <laughs> to support his professional development. And so we again congratulate John. We're proud of you. Thank you for what you do for all of us, and especially our kids every day. And now you get to make some comments. Okay, you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Long agenda tonight, but uh, I, I've told Jay I, I've been very honored and, and really humbled. I know a lot of people in my position in a lot of schools, and they all care about kids and staff and the taxpayers. and. Uh, you know, to be singled out is, is truly honor. I want to thank those who nominated me. I think it's a tribute, or it says a lot about our organization, more than anything, more than me. Um, you've heard us in here before talking about um, our classroom environment. It, it, we think it's, we not only think it's good, we measure it. Our, our transportation services, we don't not only think they're efficient, we measure it. and. Uh, food service. We don't think the meals are just good and nutritious. We measure it. I think that um, that what we've been doing as an organization to establish that um, culture is, is, is says so much about us and I've just been proud to be a part of School District of Holman 
for so many years. And thank you all. Thank you though, to those who nominated me. Thank you. Here, I'll just make mention of uh, another recognition. Last time I talked about recognizing different parts of our family, our employees, and so on. And coming up in the next week or so, we also will continue with Employee Appreciation Week. And actually beginning even this Friday on May 1 with uh, Principal's Day as well. And so, but then throughout next week, um, there are actual national recognized days and but we believe um, it's equally important just bring us all together under one umbrella as far as employee appreciation and so while we'll see specific national celebrations nurses and so on um, here we want to embrace and really thank everybody all our employees um, that make us who we are so a special recognition for that as we enter in the coming week um, for those celebrations thank you okay thank you as I've said often, the support we receive from the community, from our staff, um, the extra things that they do, and folks like John who <coughs> model what we really value each and every day um, that they come to work. We are so blessed to be um, a school district that have those sorts of employees here and that are committed to our students. So thank you, John, and congratulations. And look forward to the Employee Appreciation Week. District Administrator's Report, Dr. Carlson. If I could, I'm just going to make a couple of comments, verbal comments, in addition to what's printed in your packet. First of all, um, under my report, you have the 2015-17 state budget update. Actually, if this is related, I would just like to uh, make some comments that I think I even shared with the board through a written and one of my more recent status reports. But I did have the opportunity back on April 15th to attend a discussion in Madison uh, where about 50 superintendents gathered uh, with some legislators. And as you can imagine, the governor's proposed budget took up most, if not all, of the two-hour time um, in that discussion. So as we continue to look for working with the budget issue and await what what might happen, I encourage the board, regardless of that, as we, as we continue to move forward uh, for next year and beyond, to keep public school funding out in front with our community. And part of our ongoing conversation as a school district, there was a consensus, I can tell you, among the, again, approximately 50 superintendents in attendance on that day, that many of our residents and taxpayers um, do not necessarily fully understand school finance. It is complex. And the impact our current funding formula and budget proposals, such as the 2015-17 biennial budget being proposed, have on our public schools. So uh, as I've said before in different ways, we have a wonderful story to tell here about what we do for kids every day in the school district of Holman. Our story is one that continues to get more exciting as we work together to achieve our vision of educating every student to achieve global success. However, our work is not getting easier. Not only do we have an obligation here at home to continue to invest in our kids, but we need to be advocates for public education throughout our state to help our, our school communities, especially those that are facing even more significant financial challenges. So thank you for all you do to keep kids first as our story continues. I would have to say in recent days and weeks, um, there is more and more discussion among state legislators that much, if not all, of the proposed reductions will not happen and that the funding will be restored. I, I would have to say we continue to be on hold uh, with that, and that places us in a perhaps a little bit of a unique situation. We always are waiting on that biennial year for the state to approve the budget, but in this case, it. Uh, with what has been officially proposed, it, it creates a little bit more of a, um, 
a, a situation of uncertainty and unknown. So we'll continue to monitor, but I wanted just to share that of my experience with that of attending in Madison <coughs> related to the state budget. Also, on under my report, what you'll see as part of the personnel report tonight is uh, recommendations part of that report is to allocate an additional 20 contract days to our instructional technology coordinator Katie Krieger who really is going to um, help and lead much of the uh, professional development planning associated with our one-to-one -one technology initiative for our students and so this this was always part of that conversation as well with our referendum efforts and so um, this is separate however from her regular contract that also includes already includes 10 uh, extended days and that's already part of her so this would be separate from that um, for additional 20 days and that would be an annual decision um, made and recommended so that is part of the personnel report that's on the consent agenda this evening so with that I'd be happy to take questions are there any questions Okay, then we will, thank you, Dr. Carlson. We will move on to reports and discussion. 12.1 uh, health insurance plan quote, Mr. Clark. And Janice Waver from the Insurance Center will be joining me if we. Now she'll be up and running here just a second. <laughs> First major hurdle cut, uh, overcome tonight, that's remembering the password to the... Uh, so um, this first slide uh, reminds you of the timeline that we have uh, for our annual insurance renewal. Uh, see at the far right hand side that uh, July 1st is the date when the uh, new plan year will start. We're actually two weeks for one board meeting ahead of what the original um, schedule called for. We hope to be able to use that two weeks um, to provide a, an earlier notification and, and uh, a more comfortable transition and selection process uh, for employees as we introduce a new, a new plan design. Uh, I'm not going to go through this. There's a lot of details here. In fact, I think some of these the board members received in um, printed versions in your packet tonight. We'll also post all this information to the district's website so it's available to uh, staff members and uh, community. Uh, this uh, particular slide uh, chronicles the history of our health insurance plan and plan changes from the 2012-13 year uh, through this current year. Uh, specifically calling out, you can see with the colored headings on the columns that we have two plans uh, this year. It was the first year that we went to uh, choicing, offering two plan designs. Lots of details there about those plans. Uh, but knowing where we've been is an important part of deciding where we're going to go. So that's why we provide that information. Another important piece of information is our claims uh, experience and loss ratio on our insurance plans. I'm not going to go through these. Uh, you've seen them before, and, and people can study them in detail um, on the website when we post this material. But it does show the history of our claims experience, why, in fact, it was necessary for us to modify plan design to help control claim cost so that our plan remained affordable. Not just affordable for the district, but affordable for the employees as well. And it shows a very positive impact uh, that those plan design changes had. The lower half compares the plan design claims for plan one and plan two. Remember I said we had two plan designs. And uh, remember the bottom right hand corner on those two, the loss ratio for plan one is 129%. That means the 
plan is paying a dollar and 29 cents for every dollar it takes in that's not sustainable and uh, that will result in what you'll see later on are some increases in premiums actually surprisingly low when you look at a dollar 29 going out for every dollar coming in and then you can see the plan two design and the very favorable uh, loss ratio there um, it's important that we know uh, what kind of health insurance plan designs those other school districts with honestly whom we compete for employees what are they doing and how do our benefits in this area compare to theirs and so this was an important part of the evaluation we do and think the board should keep this in mind as uh, you're studying changes to the plan as well um, oftentimes the members of our community uh, encourage us to look beyond uh, just what's going on in government sector employment uh, this is some information from a book of business that the insurance center has employers um, with about the same number of employees we have not exactly the same and it shows the type of plan design features that they have we think again it's important for the board to have this information should community members uh, present you with questions um, so that's uh, where we've been and what we've been looking at in terms of information uh, the first two columns here uh, headed in the maroon and goldenrod are the two current two plans this is 2014-15 and we're then showing here in the last three columns the plan design designs I should say that we'd be recommending for next year remember at one point in time we had talked about the possibility of dropping plan design one it's the plan design with the lowest deductibles lowest co-insurance and lowest co-pays we talked about when the number of participants got below 10 percent dropping that plan we're proposing at this time that we continue that plan through next year and see where the participation rates go for next year what our insurance carrier has told us is that it's likely you'll end up with very adverse selection that is people with the highest 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 medical costs remaining in that plan and everybody else realizing it's not very affordable and if you thought 129 percent was a high loss ratio they said hold on because you wait till you see what it is next year in fact the plan itself will become so unaffordable that even those with high health care costs <coughs> won't be able to afford to stay in. at that point in time we'll have they, they may pull the plug on the plan if we don't uh, plan two is the status quo plan other than those changes which are mandated to be changed under the affordable care act plan three is the new plan design and you remember when we presented to you early we talked about well it'll be plan two or plan three we're gonna have two plans if we keep plan one then we'll either keep plan two along with it to pair it with or we'll go to this plan three well we're thinking the better alternative for next year is to actually add a third plan and keep plan one and two it will give our employees more choices um, so plan three you can see the items highlighted in yellow represent the changes you've heard about these before it's increasing deductibles it's increasing the um, maximum out of pockets uh, both single and family and then in the yellow down at the bottom half to offset those expenses to employees we're increasing the HRA plan amount and instead of having it be eligible to be applied only towards co-insurance costs incurred by the employee we're actually making it eligible for the second half of the deductible which will give those get employees in that plan access to those dollars earlier um, the items in um, aqua the bluish color are those changes which are um, mandated under the Affordable Care Act and uh, I think Janice is gonna I'll turn it over to Janice in a few seconds here to talk about that remember we've also talked about maintaining a two-year direction so employees know where we're going uh, not just this next year but uh, where is this going uh, over multiple years and uh, what we see happening at this point in time predict happening in 2016-17 again is that plan one uh, being abandoned uh, plan two remaining plan three remaining and um, looking at introducing plan four um, which continues to take us further and further down the path of consumerism and wellness based um, design and that's to introduce a high deductible HSA plan 
And uh, there's several reasons to be working towards that goal. I won't go into all those tonight. Tonight's presentation is really about what's going to happen next year. So Janice, I'm going to turn it over to you to talk about the recommended plan design changes. First, the universal changes. Okay. Uh, part of the Affordable Care Act is that um, the prescription co-pays now have to apply towards a max amount of pocket. Under the current plan, the co-pays for office visits, urgent care, and emergency room applied towards the max amount of pocket, but prescription co-pays did not. Starting with plans that renew in 2015, prescription co-pays now have to apply towards a max amount of pocket. So there would be a separate max amount of pocket for prescription co-pays only. Singles would be 2,000, and anyone that has family, it would be 4,000. Under your current plan, there's not a cap on a member's liability for all the co-pays. So right now, we do have some members of the home and community that have multiple prescriptions they renew on a monthly basis, and those co-pays do not accumulate or there's not a cap on that member's liability. Under this program, then the employees or members will know exactly what their largest liability will be for co-pays for prescriptions. So it will help them be able to predict better what their max amount of pocket exposure will be on a plan year basis. So that's universal for all three plans. And also to uh, change the urgent care copay. That's not an Affordable Care Act requirement. It's something to try to keep things more in line. Uh, our current plans have a $25 copay for primary care physicians, but urgent care was at 20. In our community, the average office visit with a primary care physician is running about $158, and urgent care is about 220. So we had it more skewed where urgent care was cheaper because of a $20 copay. So we're just trying to keep it in line so that uh, employees and their members make better choices. So that's just to uh, balance out the way that the plan was initially designed. So that's the reason for those recommendations. And uh, while well, Janice covered the whys or why are we making these changes each case and then the impact that these will have uh, to the individuals and of the plan are also outlined for you there. Uh, the second set of changes are not changes that apply universally to all three plan designs, but they're really the changes um, from plan two to plan three. And Janice, if you just go again, Janice will focus on the changes. She may touch upon the whys and the impacts as she goes through. Sure. Plan three is really going, trying to move more towards a, a higher level of deductible and max amount of pocket, more towards an HSA compatible plan, which is what we've proposed for the following year. So the network deductible in network would be $1,000 for single and $2,000 for family. Deductible out of Adam network provider would be $1,500 for single, $3,000 for family, which would impact the max amount of pocket for in network would be $2,500 for single, $5,000 for family, and if they utilize an out of network provider, it would be $4,500 for single or $9,000 for family. And again, we want to in, uh, change the HRA benefit where it would reimburse the second half of deductible at 500 for single and a family at 1,000. So those are the changes that are uh, impacting from two to plan three. The why, it would help lower the cost, not only for the district, but for the employees. It's more of a consumer-driven plan, which is the direction that we've had in place for a couple of years. Uh, more effectively manage future claims and premiums. Uh, we know that the plan changes that we made from plan one to plan two had a significant change on utilization and we predict that this will help continue that path. Align with our wellness incentives. Uh, we both serve on the wellness committee and we're using the data from our health insurance plans to help towards the wellness activities within the district. And then the movement towards an HSA type plan for 2016 and 17. Impact, increased plan choices. I know uh, the input we've received from employees throughout my involvement at the district is they want choice. And we had one plan for a number of years because we're trying to incorporate seven different plans down to one. And then by adding the second plan last year, I think it was very well received. And I think having three plans this year will at least give employees an option where they can pick what is the best plan design for their plan and their family going forward for the new plan year. It increases take-home pay based off their plan selection. It preserves the competitiveness with other employers in the area, and it's uh, partially responsible to financial challenges of the district. I should have said at the beginning, stop us if you have any questions, because oh, we're rifling through this pretty quickly, but uh, it's, um, 
We know tonight is really about helping to inform the board, the community, and the beginning of informing the staff. The decisions made at the next meeting. So there will be time for you to review this. Um, so that's why we're going through it a little bit more quickly. But if you do have questions, feel free to stop us. I had a question. Does someone else have a question? Oh, go ahead. Oh. So could you foresee what happening is since these you're developing new plans that ha seem to have certain characteristics of the plans like um, which might indicate like a lifestyle choice or you know uh, health health options or health promotion kinds of things would you see certain people gravitating towards one plan versus another plan based on some of those factors like with with the wellness options and things like that or do you see that happening where you're going to get a lot of people in one group like you said then there was that one was going to phase out can you kind of yeah that's not a guess um, we've actually if you can go by anecdotal and testimonial information we've had people attend our informational meetings <laughs> and tell us just that yeah this health insurance plan and what you're doing with wellness changed how i lived my life and then the other side of it is some of them are unsympathetic to those who haven't mm -hmm. saying things like so plan two it's got a low claims cost am I going to reap the benefit of that because I don't want to be paying for others who are not making a healthy choice I think they realize though that some people it's life circumstance mm -hmm. their health condition is not a choice mm -hmm. And we're trying to be responsible in designing the plans to address that as well. Yeah, so that's what I was wondering too with each of these groups. If you have one group that really has a need to have you know, more coverage, will that group get weighted down? You know, will that group have more cost than another group, obviously, that isn't needing some of those higher end costing care? But right, you'll see by the premium increases we're going to be talking about in just a few moments that actually plan one, if you went just on the claims, probably would have had about a 40% increase in premium, 129%. And the insurance companies want a little bit of a margin, just keep the doors open and make a profit, mm -hmm. um, would have resulted in a substantial increase where the plan two would have resulted in a, oh, maybe... 15% reduction they aren't that far apart and so there is still some of this collective we all own some of it so it's a little bit more of a blend than a simple plan two reaps all the results the positive results and plan one's left <clears throat> with the baggage it's it's not like that but that's what some of our employees wanted they said I'm doing all the right stuff um, but it is group health insurance. <laughs> it's not an individual health insurance right. plan. So, so we're, we're trying to be responsible. And honestly, our health insurance carrier um, is cautious in that regard, too. They, they're guiding us through that as well. Good question. So I have a couple. Yep. Sure. Questions I'm thinking about now. As we look at it, we've got the in-network and the out-of-network. And am I correct that both Mayo and Gunderson Lutheran are considered in-network? That is correct. In our current plan? Just maybe not all of the providers within those organizations? or They are. Anything that's under the Gunderson umbrella and the Mayo are in-network, including Mayo Rochester. Okay. So they're in-network. And so then as I see these plans, and I think I'm thinking forward, you know, it makes sense as we raise the deductibles, our premiums will go down or at least stay, stay the same. But does there come and are we reviewing what area districts um, are doing as far as their deductibles? I mean, we could just keep doing this every year. And, um, and the other part of it is, you know, as we look at Act 10 and what that's allowed us to do with um, pay raises the CPI I think what it was at 1.62 but you're seeing like in network is it's doubling the in network deductible is going from 500 to a thousand and none of our employees are going to see double their pay you know their salary this year so I'm just wondering if you know we're looking at those percentages of increases and 
um, you may have already or it's just something if you haven't I would I'm gonna go back to your first question your first okay. question is are we looking at what others are doing one of the exercises the slide I have up on the screen right now when we had mm -hmm. the meetings before we came to you and before we developed recommendations was to look at other plans one of the exercises with the group there was take a look at the plans which one of these do you want to move to from the home and plan the answer is none when you look at our health insurance plan and the cost to employees, there's none uh, that you'd want to look at. Now, some would say, I'd like to go to the HMO, but we received a strong message from employees some time ago. They don't want restrictions on in and out of network. And so if you remove that option, the answer was none. So we fare uh, very well. Um, and yes, we are studying the impact to employees. Second question. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, the slides you'll be seeing in a few moments help to reveal what the impact, the net pay impact is if you stay with a plan that's expensive and continues to increase at 20% rates. In fact, you have so little left in take-home pay uh, that you can't afford to be on the plan. Uh, so those are upcom that's an upcoming slide. Okay. Thank you. You've been mm -hmm. a little, you've made our case for us to move on here with the presentation. <laughs> uh, you remember one thing that we did study was the spousal subsidy. Um, we decided to defer action on that. At least that would be our recommendation to the board. Uh, rationale being that we'd like to see it, um, if we do look at something as a spousal provision, to be really more of a um, incentive-based rather than a consequence-based um, idea. And we haven't quite worked out the details on how that could happen. Um, also, there's complexities. Uh, if you have three different plans, which now we've decided to recommend to you, and then you have two different premium rates because you have a spousal subsidy, now you've got a total of six plan rates. So it's like, it like doubles everything. And uh, we're not sure that the complexities that are uh, going to be worth the benefit. Um, we're not sure how we would track the changes in health care coverage status for a spouse if you establish the plan and if that changes during the middle of the year. So there were just too many variables we didn't have solid answers to to include it in our recommendation this year. It would be something we would consider for next year. Review and revisit. Can I ask one follow-up question, Jay, of something that you just said that you're, you had gotten group feedback that wanted to be able to get you wanted to be able to flexibility to get um, care out of the network. That was important yeah. to the group. Choice. Yep. To be able to go outside of the network so they were willing to have that cost increase when it came to the, not the premium, but the uh, deductible. Now, the, the one thing, the message I think what really received was the employees want freedom of choice of where they doctor so they can go to both Gunderson and Mayo. If we went to an HMO carrier like Gunderson or Health Tradition, the employee could only go to Gunderson or they could only right. go to the Mayo Clinic Health System. Right. And the employees really wanted the flexibility to go to both. And we have, we have some employees in the community that the employee goes to one doctor at a particular facility and the spouse or the children go to another or they go back and forth. And they wouldn't have that flexibility of doing that under an HMO plan. How does that impact the cost? HMOs are typically less cost than a PPO plan because of the network differential. And uh, with an HMO, they're going to give their own selves a bigger discount. And the discounts are part of the plan design and what drives rates. But also the claims and utilization will definitely have a bearing on it, um, the rates as well, not just strictly an HMO. It depends on the discounts have an impact, claims and utilization of a group, and what they can predict as the future risk within a group. So. And I'm always careful when we're talking about insurance and somebody says the cost because as it turns out sometimes mm -hmm. it's less costly for the employee sometimes it's less costly for the employer not always both mm -hmm. in this case an HMO when you say would it be more cost efficient the answer is yes because mm -hmm. it'd be more cost efficient for the employer and more cost efficient right. for the employee mm -hmm. but it eliminates choice <laughs> And they place choice ahead of cost. Long term, <clears throat> is it going to stay that way? 
for the choice? Because um, I know we're always operating, and, and Gary's made a good point about the, you know, income and expense. Yeah. I mean, this right. is uh, she's asking questions that long term were. I mean, I, I, I'm not in favor of Cheryl's comments, too, about just like, we'll just keep just taking from them. I don't like that either. That's not right. But right. Um, but as from a business standpoint, money standpoint, is is that an area that we could save a lot of money if we took away that option and gave them maybe more so they can make their own choice? I would recommend if the board wants to explore that direction, it becomes part of a long-range plan. I don't... At this point, I would not feel comfortable, based on what we've said, going before the employees and saying, guess what, we had a three-year plan, we had a two-year plan, uh, we're going to do this instead. Um, that's not how you earn the trust and confidence of your employees. So if that's somewhere we'd like to go in the future, um, we can put that in the hopper and begin to evaluate that. I think an HSA, high deductible plan, is a really responsible alternative to an HMO plan design, but that could be discussed as well. Yeah, that's well, I have first hand experience with it, and I really, it saved me a lot, but it's, you know, there's a lot of people here that maybe it wouldn't work for, I don't know. And I really admire your work you're doing. I don't, my, I don't admire your job, but I admire <laughs> the information you do for the, for the board. So. Remember, and I didn't put the slide in here tonight, this is about how an insurance, what an employee and the employer expect from an insurance plan. And we're trying to do the best of both. There are many places where both employer and employee are served by the same changes. There's some cases where not. Um, I just have one more comment. You know, I know there's been a lot of discussion and stakeholder feedback sessions and talking about what are the priorities for staff. You know, if they want to be able to have choice and consumer choice and that then becomes kind of the driving force of looking for options for the choices if that's the if that's the primary goal but then does the employer does the employee then find out that really what does that come down to in dollars and cents and are they able to like change their mind yes i mean because really it's it's about what you can afford every month and so in fact the next slide <laughs> We'll talk about what's the impact to the employee now of plan one, plan two, and plan three. And honestly, if you put an HMO up there, it would continue down the path that plan three is introducing. So um, yeah, uh, we, can, we can go back in the future and uh, begin to evaluate those options as well. I, you know, like just one thing, since we're all forward thinking, I, and, and I, all those numbers you throw out, it's impressive. I know there's so many variables. I've worked with a lot of healthcare providers, and it's not an easy, it's not an easy game to play. But I would hate to see us get to the point where we offer these program, offer these policies, and then we have to start cutting staff because we can't afford to have. That's not acceptable. We have to be. I think you guys are really being proactive. I, I, I know I've worked with Jay. We've had meetings with this before, so. Right. And then at the same time, do you want to, to avoid cutting staff, have an insurance plan that won't allow you to attract staff? You have plenty of staff. You won't be able to get the good ones to come. Um, this is all, none of this is easy. Uh, this is all balancing what's in the best interest of kids. And um, that's, lots of difficult decisions and lots of options to study. You know, we want to attract and retain. I'd go back to those comments about have you asked staff. I'll tell you this, depending upon which member you stop and ask, you may get a different answer. People value different things. Some would say stop with this choice thing. Um, others right. would say I want, you know, there is no universal answer when it comes to health insurance. So we're trying to, John Daly mentioned it earlier tonight, we're trying to monitor the results we get for the decisions we make, attracting, retaining quality people, expenses, all of those uh, variables. So, all right, I'm gonna move on. Please do. Thank you. <laughs> um, so what you have in this next slide, it's divided into two pieces because if I show the whole slide, then it's hard to keep people corralled around 
what we want to look at. So the top two lines are the single uh, insurance plan premium on a monthly basis, the total premium and the family premium. You can see in column one is this year's plan one design. Plan two, pardon me, plan one next year shown in the next column. 20% increase in the premiums. Plan two as it is today in the next column, 0% increase in premiums. And then the plan three that we'd introduce for next year, a 5% reduction in premiums over the plan two design this year. So we're actually offering a plan <coughs> next year with lower premiums. The next set of rows is the amount the employer pays. You can see that this year on plan one, the employer on a single plan pays a little over 8,000 and on a family plan a little bit over 18,000. <coughs> you can see for plan one next year, the employer pays less. Remember, that's because the employer's contribution is 85% of the lowest cost plan. And what happened with the lowest cost plan? It went down 5%. So even to, towards plan one, the employer's contribution is going to go down. Does that make sense? We're tying our premium to that far right-hand column, 7,752 for a single, 17,555 and 20 cents. My goodness, we could get that rounded to an even number, couldn't we? Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's the uh, employer's contribution. And then because the employer's contribution is always equal to the plan three design, you can see what happens to the plan one employee amount they have to pay. If you're on a family plan and plan one this year, you pay $5,695. Next year, because the premium went up 20%, and because the employer's contribution went down by 5%, that premium contribution by the employee jumps to $11,500. You understand why the insurance company and I believe that it won't be long and there will be no one left on Plan 1. That contribution difference, that contribution difference of about $5,000, am I doing that right? $6,000 comes out of the employee's paycheck before they have to calculate their take-home pay. That's the implication of continuing to choose plan one. And the rest of this chart filled in just gives an example of our, a teacher in the district who's got the most years of experience and the highest degree MA plus 30 degree, uh, credits. Uh, get, lays out an example of what the cost, uh, what their salary is, how much is taken out of their check in terms of Wisconsin retirement and FICA and income tax. Um, it's just an illustrative example showing the net left after those, then showing the family health insurance plan contribution and the salary, uh, pardon me, yes, contribution and the salary after the WRLS and health contribution. We do show below that some of the benefits the district's added back in, in the form of HRA benefits and stipends and reimbursement opportunities to show what then the net uh, salary would be under both a single and family plan. And you can go across and you can see what would happen to the employee. I said about $6,000, that's what the bottom line is if you're on a family plan. If there were no change in the salary, it'd be about $6,000 less in wages. But you can see if, you, if the person elects plan three, there's actually an increase in net wages. I won't go through the other, because this is running long, I won't go through the next sample, but this is a person who's on plan two in the 2014-15 um, plan year and uh, shows the impact if they move uh, to plan one, plan two, or plan three. It's the same information, just using as a starting point someone who's elected plan two this year. Uh, last slide that I have shows the impact for the district. Um, the estimated uh, premium decrease, uh, the estimated HRA coinsurance decrease, because we anticipate a number of people migrating to Plan 3. And remember, those people won't get the HRA for coinsurance, but what they will get is the second to the bottom line, the HRA for the second half of the deductible, which we anticipate going up by a substantial amount. In the end, a $120,000 less expense this coming year than this year in health insurance on the district's behalf. 
So I wanted to show the impact of the employee economically. I also want to show the impact of the district economically. So you're saying it's 120,000 less than what we spent this year? Correct. So as we're looking at overall budgets, we had planned for a 5% increase. Correct. So we're actually seeing a reduction rather than the anticipated 5% increase. And this gets at what some of the board members were bringing up earlier. How are we going to, in the light of some of the budget issues we're facing, continue to have staff levels to continue to? And that's what we said we were going to try to deliver um, several months ago as we worked on this project. And you just keep that plan one in option just so it's easier for a transition kind of thing, too? Makes sense. Yeah, the idea is let it reach its own fate. That's wise. So that's the recommendation. You would not be asked to take any action tonight. You'd have time to reflect and submit questions to Dr. Carlson, who can direct them to Janice or myself, and uh, be prepared to take action at the next meeting. But we really are down the road, Jay, right? You've received these quotes now um, from the insurance. So we're really down the road past looking at an HMO for this year, but it is something that we could look at possibly next year as we oh, begin. Absolutely. Yeah, and we come to you, uh, I don't remember if it was January or February, we start with personnel and governance. If there's ideas that need to be embedded in what we look at next year, then those are, that's the window of time to say, you know, we need to take another look at, um, look at it in a different light. Um, we can do all those things early in that planning calendar that we shared as the second slide. Is there a way to find out which provider um, in our area, the majority of our, yes. so we would be able to look at then maybe an H&M all with that organization? And we actually, the report that we received from UMAR actually gives the top 20 uh, providers and their dollars that are spent by our membership. So it shows not only uh, facilities, but also shows the different uh, providers individually. Good. Seems like a smart way to go. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you for your patience. Thank you Thanks. very much. Then moving on to Beth with the bus purchase. I came across uh, a school bus that were, there was three of them available uh, when one of the Nelson bus called me and asked me if I was interested. Two of them are already gone, so they're gonna, they were holding one for me. And as you see in the issue paper, it's a 2013 school bus. It has a little extras that we normally don't get, which are the under storage on the bus, which is really important uh, for activities, ski trips, students that go on field trips that have coolers and baskets of food and and it's much safer to have them down there anyway we want to see if we can move ahead this year with that obviously I don't I've already bought two buses so I can't buy another one this year but I would like to get money from my next year's budget to be able to get this bus right away before it goes somebody else nabs it so that's what I'm this is a practice that the board has supported in the past um, when we have a favorable deal a purchase that we've done that advanced purchase and so then this would be uh, out of Beth's allocation for 2015-16 kind of paying this back in a sense so uh, just so all of you know this is something that you have supported in the past to do this and very uh, aligned with our and so this actually is part of the consent as well this evening so any questions then at this time Okay, thank you. You look so happy when you said it has under storage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just curious how many miles you have on it. You know? It has a little, little over 20,000 on it, and it's 2013, so it's not new bus, not driven a lot. <laughs> Great, thank work, you, Ben. Work the bugs out of it, too, maybe. <laughs> and then the staffing plan, Dr. Carlson. Thank you. At the last board meeting, the staffing plan was presented to you, and it involves a lot of different areas. Um, uh, so it is, I wanted to put it on the reports and discussion tonight. It is on the consent as well. Uh, this sometimes in the past, we've put it in both areas, even the following board meeting after it's been presented, just to allow the board uh, an opportunity to uh, continue to ask questions, share thoughts, and so on. 
Um, so we have done that, put it on both. Um, I know recently there's been some questions forwarded, some uh, specific questions regarding either one or both of the new positions being proposed um, as far as in the area of school information and the assessment and data. I know Wendy and Jan presented at the last board meeting on those. Um, be prepared they're here tonight to assist in responding there was some questions asked that would try to respond to even as late as today that I know some of you perhaps may have not seen um, so uh, you know um, certainly there's a desire or recommendation to try to advance and move forward with the plan as presented but we're here to obviously assist you in understanding any ongoing questions you may have and um, if, if that impacts uh, somewhat of a decision tonight I, I would simply ask if there are questions be as direct as possible so that we can do a thorough job of following up and getting those back to you and again a lot of thought a lot of work annually goes into this and um, there isn't boy uh, to really impact our kids and our and the personnel that really has that direct impact on kids there's uh, very few other things as important as our staffing plan and what we um, present to you ultimately for your recommendation or your decision on the recommendation so with that I've already said to Jan and Wendy uh, but also in a, there's other parts I I know some of the recent questions were specific to those but I know that there's other parts to this plan. Um, if there are questions on the high school, uh, that will be me. As um, I think uh, our, I know Mr. Bear is off to a recognition tonight, and so I said I would try to do my best. Um, Julie's here for our pupil services. There's a couple changes there as well. So we want to do everything we can tonight to help you, and then um, how that results in. Uh, moving to consent I guess that will be up to you ultimately to decide that so with that open up for questions and um, and then uh, those uh, maybe in the audience uh, might be be prepared to come up into the side table to help as needed okay are there any questions um, I had some questions and I know Dale I was one of the people that forwarded questions to you kind of late and I apologize for that it just okay been busy with life um, um, some of the concerns I have just with the the uncertainty of the state budget and the funding kind of being in a holding pattern um, with the cost of the two positions and it's not the classroom teaching type positions it was it's the two positions that the district ones um, the cost of those is pretty significant and I just feel like if we can wait on those two positions until we know for sure we have a little better idea what the funding is going to be like from the state and I actually would like some more some more data from other districts maybe the same size as ours I know today um, you had emailed back Sun Prairie Elmbrook and Chippewa Falls have positions of um, data and assessment coordinators and they are they are bigger than our district Sun Prairie's almost twice as big and I was trying to find their um, salary ranges online and wasn't able to but I'm just curious to know if they actually do have a uh, assessment and data coordinator um, like the one that we are proposing for our district um, it just they are they are two big big positions to add when we have already we had promised those three other or those four other departments those temporary one-time chunks of money and then we retracted that but these positions weren't retracted so I I'm just really struggling with putting this much money into these positions until we have a little bit more um, information on what the state budget is going to look like and what exactly these positions will look like if we put money into these positions and create positions that we know they never go away they're there permanently and I'm not saying they're not worthy I just really in my head I'm trying to wrap my head around what exactly the position looks like and what the position frees up in order <coughs> why it's really really necessary I know we're data driven 
but is there no way to accomplish this without adding a position between seventy five and ninety five thousand dollars? That just I I just can't. Mm, I'm really struggling with that. And other comments? Any comment to Lisa? Well, I wondered about the data part of it too, just in that some of some of the things that that position would be aiming at sounds like we are doing some of that internally already you know possibly not clear on exactly who is doing all that but if we are if we do have someone internally that's already doing that do we need to create this high level of a position can we work with some of the resources that we have I guess I agree kind of with that amount of money for that position can we work with what we have to see what we can do with what the budget's going to bring down and Kate you had a yeah a specific question is I was trying to um, thank you Dale for your response to me today um, and I too apologize that it was late um, thank you also for pointing out that Sun Prairie and Chippewa Falls and Elmbrook have these positions um, so here's, here's my specific question I want to know if anybody in the county or any other district of our size has this position. And I'm asking that because Sun Prairie is three times more than us. Um, Chippewa Falls is 1.5% more than us. Elmbrook is four times bigger than us. And those are the three that were mentioned that do have this position. So that's one question is, who compared to our district, which has 9,500 citizens approximately, also has this. And I guess I still want to know why we need this. I guess I don't have answers to that question in terms of when I weigh on both sides, I understand that every person in education and in business too I think is dealing with data right now but people take on their own data and they get it done so I need to be convinced that there's a reason that our district staff cannot handle this and therefore we need one person just to do this um, those are my two specific questions that I would like some data on any other questions or comments or I, I um I thought the same thing all of the ditto um, anyway but I always wonder with the technology what, what we're pushing to with the referendum that passed if there wasn't some systems in place that it would make this more streamlined and and I'm not sure exactly what all these positions do either so uh, I didn't know if that would but that's a variable too that with technology if we had we keep going forward like we should we would have um, maybe we could uh, streamline some of the processes so thanks well and and I think I did share with Dale um, I, I have no doubt that we need someone doing data for us in the district I think we are relying on people that that isn't their forte and we hire folks with that background in instruction and those sorts of things and pupil services and then we require them to get bogged down in all this data because data is is so high on the 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 pole of of um, what's being requested out there so I have no doubt that we need it I you know I was concerned about the two positions and uh, something that rose I understand we have infinite campus and that that 12 month information specialist will be doing a lot of work with infinite campus and supporting our, our stakeholders and entering data and doing all of that the other side of it the assessment data coordinator I don't know if I'm understanding it correctly but they'll be pulling out a lot of information and in my mind in my experiences I always think it's best to have the people who are putting it in put, be the ones pulling it out and so I'm not sure again I just started thinking do we need to have two people and are there since we have I know we have a system right now to track our assessment that's been working you know pretty well um, but there's an interest in moving that information to infinite campus are there additional costs to doing that we heard 
about another program wise something last at the last meeting and, and is there I've heard that there is a cost to to doing that I think um, so I'm just curious if we're moving all of our data to that is that another module or something that we're going to have to so those questions came up and I've shared some of those with Dale and um, you have it on your screen okay anyone yeah but is there a cost to that is the school district to use that wise dash or to get that information from there into into our infinite campus so I think the we have that's why we asked Dale to put it on reports and discussion to see if anybody else had similar questions may I ask a follow-up so, question yes. too so the data coordinator I would also like to know a specific question. Does he or she relieve some of the duties of um, people that are doing it now currently in administration alone, or are they relie relieving the duties of our teachers who also are compiling tons and tons of data that take up a lot of time? Will that data person also be relieving our teaching staff? Of all the stuff they have to do to enter data and forward it etc so that's just a question whose whose positions will be relieved by this hiring okay so, so any others so then if there is I guess as we're moving forward if there is an interest and this is something that happened last year <laughs> if we this is on our um, consent agenda this evening and if there is enough interest we could as is our process pull this the staffing plan off of the consent agenda and then when we get to a motion on this item you could move um, and if you want to postpone the decision on that you could move to approve the staffing plan because in the other areas I will tell you that we haven't a lot of questions on we need to really you know to move on those so we don't want to delay the whole staffing plan but if it's just this area that would be one way of doing that you've given us a lot I don't want to put any of us on in a position to try to react or respond tonight I we're gonna to have to balance um, I, again you wouldn't have this recommendation if we didn't strongly feel that this was in the best interest of the district our kids our teachers and and so on so I think I could I could even respond right now to much of this but I um, just please know that that we would not have gone through this if we didn't feel strongly that there would be a benefit um, but I want to we'll we'll follow up um, we'll work on this um, on your specific questions and um, come right back and um, we do know that um, with these two positions it's going to be critical that if we are going to move forward again time it's a time issue for us of, as far as being able to attract quality people with this and so it's going to be important that I can tell you that uh, even without talking to some key people out there um, I would have every intention to continue to bring this back for you and um, ultimately it'll be your decision but um, we'll, we'll do that we'll do our best on following up with the questions and um, I guess I'll leave it at that for right now I, I did agree with you Cheryl though I kind of feel like if we have question on one area I kind of feel like the other areas that we don't have a question about we should we proceed with those mm -hmm. yes we could because it's part of the I, consent agenda you can pull this out separately and then we could have an appropriate motion to approve the staffing plan um, with the exception of this or to postpone a decision till the next meeting or I want to I mean I, I would so like to do that okay so anything else any any questions about the other areas of the staffing plan okay now I have to go back to my agenda so then we are at the consent agenda items so for the purposes of the consent agenda are there any items that you would like to have um, pulled separately to consider to consider them um, independently of the consent agenda 
uh, staffing report I would like to hold. Okay, any other items? Then I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items with the exception of the staffing report. I would so approve. Is there a second? A second. And discussion. Okay, seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose, nay. Motion carries. So we have approved the consent agenda items except the staffing report. And I would entertain a motion regarding the staffing report. Uh, I would make a motion to approve the staffing report with the exception of the, um, the assessment and data coordinator position and the 12 month information specialist position pending more information. Okay, is there a second? Second it. Okay, any further discussion? I'd just like to say that <coughs> uh, the history of, of our administration, administrative staff handling finances of the school district and handling staffing decisions has been pretty solid um, right now. And I think that they've done their homework on these positions and I think they deserve to be have a good look at them I mean des we, they deserve the right to have us uh, support those des those decisions mm -hmm. and to uh, move those uh, positions forward okay any other <coughs> comments or questions I'm not saying that I wouldn't eventually Gary I just feel and I just need to be on solid ground with it in my own head before I could feel good about supporting it that's all and Tim, you look like you. Yeah, I, I think, you know, as I look at this, I think the district needs these positions. I do think that they are well supported as we look to be a continuing to growing district. I do, however, have concerns with the state budget and its impact on adding positions. And so I am going to support this, not because I think I need more information. I'm just a little hesitant to be adding right now in lieu of too many uncertainties around the budget. Okay. Any other discussion? I'd like to, uh, we have a, a, a format for requesting data. No. Is it requesting data like what we're requesting? Is that appropriate to use that format to ask for this data? You're talking about all the questions that we threw out here during our uh, discussion. We should driven. actually, yep. Yeah, we should actually begin to look at that format as we ask those some. questions. Um, <laughs> Do you want to do that before we approve or go to vote on the motion or? No, I don't, I don't think okay. it's necessary. I just, want to, I just okay. kind of want to remind the Make board that we, we've okay. got, we did this <laughs> format yep. and uh, we did it for a reason and if it's appropriate, we should be using it. And I was going to ask a question, but. Okay. Okay, thank you. So any other comments on the motion? I guess my, my thought too is the budget, but then also um, we haven't had a position like this before where we're having someone specifically looking at data and so given that that's kind of a unique newer position you know and yeah i think it's a wise wise choice tom did you have anything else i just was curious what i know this these types of positions are hard to fill or hard to find so so it's asap dale finding or making getting this what uh, i would think that we will come back then may 11th and then boy yeah uh, mr cruz to really attract, um, you know, we, how much longer after the May 20, if we come back for approval of May 20, I'm sorry, 26th, 26. you know, we're going to reach a point whether we can go into June or not, but at some point we're going to have to make a decision. Do we uh, move forward for next year or not? But I, I would say we could go another board meeting or two. Um, Okay, any others? So a motion has been made and a, uh, seconded to approve the staffing w report with the exception of the two positions um, so mentioned. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Nay. Motion carries. So then we are moving on to board member reports and discussion. I'll call on board members in the order of the roll call and ask that you present any comments or committee reports you have. And I would just like to start by saying to our new 
um, student rep, don't feel pressured, Jeff. This is something that we just ask if you have any comments about activities, things that are going on in the high school or in the school district. You certainly can bring them and share if you want to just listen to e this evening. That would be great, but we do welcome you um, aboard, and you'll be a little bit in the middle of the group, so I'll give you some time to hear what other board members say. But, but um, we'll begin with Lisa Collins. I don't really have anything to add. We've had our, our first, um, other than the finance committee meeting, we hadn't met for a while due to the referendum things going on and dealing with that. But I think we're trying to get back on track just with, um, you know, all of our budget pieces that we're looking at and um, possibly bringing on another community uh, member. We've, we've added one a couple months ago, Jennifer Shams, and looking for someone else um, to add. Um, we did not start our talking about our data request um, that, that we had not done that at this last meeting. I apologize to my fellow board members. We had talked about saying we were going to do that with our committees, um, but it looks like we're going to have that on the agenda for this next time. But that's about all I have. Okay. Um, Gary Dunlap. Uh, I'd like to welcome Jeff Young to the board. Um, can give you any recommendations is stay engaged and and we will lean on you to get some information from the students so stay engaged with the students and listen to what they have to say and, and bring it to us so we can use that information that's what we're gonna, we're gonna try to use you for it um, congratulations to the new elected officers and new organizational not much changed but <laughs> and uh, there's lots and lots and lots of things going on in the, in the district right now um, <clears throat> lots of events and lots of shows and ceremonies, etc. Get out and enjoy it right now, and 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 uh, tell all your students and, and kids to be safe out there because spring has a way of <coughs> making kids a little crazier than normal. <laughs> yes, that's all I have. Hey, thank you, Anita Jagosinski. Um, welcome to the board, Jeff. I hope we're somewhat entertaining tonight. <laughs> <laughs> They're crazy. They're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, and I just an update from the personnel and governance committee meeting um, I had the health insurance update which is why I was looking up school information all during your presentation sorry Jay but I <laughs> sat through it last week so um, and we had talked about uh, paid leave for staff members at the beginning of last school year when some staff members went on maternity leave and there was some there were some issues with them um, having their leave paid for in different manners and we got that straightened out at personnel and governance which was appreciated um, and that'll be coming to the board and we also talked at great length about state tournament um, clinic attendance whether or not to um, close the high school how to count kids attendance at the tournament if they rode the coach bus versus if they rode down with their parents so um, Dale was going to get some more information from um, Bob Bear and come back and we will discuss it some more. And um, that is all I have. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Tom Cruz. Um, welcome to the board. Jeff, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Welcome. It's a, it's a fun place to be. It's, chairs are nice up here, aren't they? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the new student always brings donuts on their first That's night. That's what I That is not true. Damn. Oh, I just. Kind of a kind of a rough group sometimes, <laughs> but uh, we we all have, have the same goals. So welcome aboard, and uh, I like to give kudos to Jay for his support person. She brings awesome coffee to the finance committee meeting. We just power oh, right on through those things. That was that wasn't that was to not Jay. That was Shirley. He said her. Support. I said a support. His, okay, support. His, oh, yeah, support yeah. person. Yeah, okay, I don't know, gotcha. didn't know her name. All right. <laughs> yes. Is that it then, Tom? That's it. Okay, then um, Jeff, Shirley. do you have any comments? Uh, not at the moment, okay. I think. All Interesting right. experience <laughs> first, so, yep. Good. Um, then Kate Mayer. Um, yeah, question, Jeff. What is your specialty? What's your passion, and what do you love about high school? Let us know something about you. Please let it be something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> passion, more, uh, sports I guess I love seeing people uh, do better than what they did the day before okay. so that really drives me and are you involved in sports also 
I am in track at the moment, and since freshman year, I played soccer as the varsity goalie. So. Excellent. Thank you. Steph, you got to well, tell the rest of them about what you were telling Anita us. Anita was clapping doing. for you Nona. because you're on track. I love track. <laughs> yeah. Tell them about your Winona project you're working on. Though. Uh, at the moment, I am a Boy Scout working in my Eagle Scout project. I am doing a community garden for a low-income community in Winona. In Holman? Winona. 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 Thank you. That's cool. Isn't that cool? That's very cool. That is very cool. How big is it? Uh, it's two lots. I'm doing ten beds. Uh, the beds are 12 by 12, so I don't know. Wow. Yeah. You're busy. <laughs> Gonna be. Fun. Oh, that was really Thank cool. Thank you for that. Well, you're a very interesting, wonderful person, I think. So welcome aboard. We'll be happy to get to know you. Um, I wrote down everything, which I won't go through, from all of the, the principles that um, tell us what's going on in the weekly events from high school through all the elementaries. Um, there's just like Gary said, there's so much going on right now that our community needs to celebrate. Um, kudos to everybody, first of all, at the high school band experience that made it such a good experience and also enabled them to get back home in spite of the delays they had. Thank you to Festival Foods. I understand that they gave food to the kids on the bus. Um, uh, another particular band thing from HMS, um, compliments from La Crescent that said our kids were so well behaved and so polite and that's kind of unheard of in middle school. I'm just <laughs> saying, middle school is kind of a tough time. So that was very cool. Um, I'm j I, I won't mention the rest of the schools, but things I wrote down, quiz bowl domination, forensics in French, National History Day finalists, um, Miracle Minute raising 800 bucks in a day, Environmental Day with all kinds of um, scientists and local people coming in to shape our young kids, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Visitor Center, kids visiting that, authors coming to all these elementary schools, um, math competition, <laughs> um, and then finally, it's been a week of testing, I know, several weeks of testing, and thank you to my leadership team and to the teachers who helped prep all the kids for this test, and uh, all the work that that means. That means time out of some of the other stuff teachers have to do, but it, it is something we have to do, and I appreciate what they have all gone through to do that. So. Thank you, Kate. Mr. Menninger, Tim. A couple of things this evening. First, um, I think very fitting that uh, early in the meeting we had Employee Appreciation Week. I think uh, always very fitting, but especially this time of year. Um, it does get difficult as the weather turns warm and we get into spring and all of those things, so certainly appreciate all that everybody does to keep the focus on education. Um, anybody who's been on this board a while knows I need to get this next plug in. It gets really hard when you see the finish to stay focused. And if we had year-round school, there might not be that finish, so we'd be able to continue to keep that education cycle going. So sorry I could not help myself with that. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to talk about tonight is uh, certainly appreciation and support of the Town of Holland's action um, in appealing the uh, recent decision on the Badger Cooley line. And I just thought to kind of help everybody understand this because I've been very involved in this from buildings and grounds and committee. There are a couple of different projects um, that were affected with this. The first one was the CapEx project, and that was the one that brought the line in. The second one is the Badger Cooley project, which is taking the line back out. And as, as we look at this, I think it would probably be my belief that that project isn't stopping in Madison either. It's going to continue to take that power out of the Dakotas and continue to funnel that out to the East Coast. So the problem is, is now that the substation is at the um, Briggs Road, is getting it back out. So to me, the real problem isn't the line going out. The real problem is the line that brought it in to begin with. And as they talk about all their talking points about reliability and transmission and all of this stuff, I can't help but continue to ask, why can't all those needs be met 
where the line does not have to double back on itself. Why does it have to come in to go back out? And we have to keep asking that question. And if you start to look at it, and again, this is my belief or what I, what I feel, there's a partner in that original product, product, project, the line that came in, that is not a partner of the line that's going out, that has power lines at that current substation. And I have to wonder if that's not the reason for the location of the substation and not all the other reasons they talk about. And if that is the case, then it appears to be very self-serving to their needs and not to the needs of the community. So thank you, Town of Holland. Thank you for your continuing to fight this fight and hope with good resolution and good luck to them. Okay. I guess I, in addition to all of the welcoming and the same comments that were made, I um, would like to note that I had the opportunity to attend the Holman Community Breakfast, the Holman Foundation, um, last Thursday and gave a little update or report um, on the school district and what we've been doing. Um, the Baronic family was recognized as the Fred Frick Servant Leader um, honorees this year for all that they've done with uh, Pizza Corral and and, um, in the community and um, and it was nice to see the, um, the the community youth center the the community center just down the road that they really kicked off their campaign their meeting tonight it's on Kate and I I know we both really wanted to be at their meeting tonight um, we continue I assured everyone that the school district continues to be supportive of the project and we'll do, look and see where we could possibly be a partner um, in the project even though it may not be on district land um, certainly they will be serving our youth and we have facility needs from time to time and we discuss some of those things um, so I think we should keep an open mind and see where there might be some um, cross benefits to us utilizing some space there if if that is at all possible um, and then graduation season you know we talk about all the activities and things going on and there's academic programs and there's sports activities and and other music activities and those sorts of things going on but there's nothing better I don't think than graduation season so make sure you make plans for graduation May 23rd one o'clock graduation is I mean uh, Memorial weekends a little bit earlier it seems this year so you know keep that on your calendar there is nothing I think more rewarding than watching those young people walk across that stage um, as they complete their 12th year of, high, of school and it is a very positive thing for us as board members to do there's also the recognition recognition event the Wednesday before that the senior banquet takes place and that's a really nice event to go to you get to hear all and see all the positive things that our students are doing and are being recognized for and this year is at 260 some students will be approving the the graduates here not too long um, probably the first we should have that on the next agenda on the next agenda so we know those numbers I hear the next year is almost 300 yeah so those numbers just keep growing and growing but um, just be safe and be celebratory and and remember to thank our staff for all they've done to help support the students in their journey to that point um, let's see board correspondence you received the red folder I know there were some things from the uh, village on some of the growth that's going to be happening and some of the residential um, planning that's happening in the in within our area committee written reports you received rep written reports from finance student achievement and personnel and governance and board meeting schedule 11th is our next board meeting senior banquets the 20th the 23rd is the graduation and 26th is our school board meeting is that a Tuesday yes it is. and that is Tuesday just keep that in mind that that's a little different so board meeting reflection I kind of wanted to use that as um, we threw out a number of questions and as we reflect on our data request tool I think dr. Carlson I wouldn't want you to take a lot of time to look at those individually but if there is if any of those questions are going to be I think what we've identified if the data um, is not necessary to make a decision I would think hope that we didn't ask the questions unless it was we felt that they were um, necessary to make a decision Lisa you look like you're well I'm just thinking do we need to 
look at all the questions that we were asking and weigh, you know, kind of weighing that against some of our criteria. I mean, are we, do we have time to do that right now during a board meeting, or is that something that we need to have a little I, bit more look at? You know, I think it would be for time purposes if um, Dr. Carlson if um, or Christina could type each of those individual data requests up. And then we could take a look at that, but I think the probably the most the most urgent one is how much time is it going to take? Is any of that data going to be really is it is it available? I think that's one thing we've said. Is it already exists? If it already exists, or is it going to take a long time to compile that? I think that's when we would need to um, really have a conversation about do we need that information in order for us to make a decision. So I'm not sure if May 11th is going to, if you feel you can get all of those out to us and then we can start to in, individually go through those. I don't know if you've can identified who asked the questions, those kind of things, so. Is it possible, Dr. Carlson, that you shoot us back the questions that you heard us say and if there was something that wasn't articulated or didn't come across to you because you were like this and right. several of us were we will take a look as soon as tomorrow and uh, communicate back to you on, okay. on just that and I know that in your Dropbox in the important folder in Dropbox is our process so if when you get those then you can go to your Dropbox mm -hmm. and go to the folder saying important and then you can look at those questions those are the initial questions um, if you asked one of those questions and it goes on and there, there's a lot of in-depth work that needs to be done, you may be the one directing or leading that, then um, requesting that information. So Thank to you. follow our process. Okay. So then executive session. Kate, I would ask that you read the motion for executive session. I'd be happy to. <clears throat> be it resolved that the Board of Education moves to executive session as per Wisconsin statute 19.851C for the purpose considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. In this case, negotiating terms of administrative contract. Is there a okay. second? Oh. I'll second. Okay, Thank then you. roll call. Yes, please answer yes or no. Lisa? Yes. Gary? Yes. Cheryl? Yes. Anita? Yes. Tom? Yes. Myself, yes. And Tim? Yes. Thank you. Okay, motion passes. We will go into executive session in about four minutes.